<laughs> Salutations, I'm still Critique and this is still Phenotopia. As you may have guessed by the fact that I am in a Thai city and not near the save statue in Dea, there are some things that I said that I would demonstrate in the previous part through annotations or otherwise that I would demonstrate later, and so I am going to demonstrate that stuff. First off, I want to show how you can get the Moonstone in that pot up there without using a stamina boost. So first off, you want to throw a javelin to the right, and then even though it's out of bounds, you can still stand on it. And from there, you want to use the slingshot to hit that pot, but... Like, if you're off-screen and you try to fire the slingshot at a certain angle, the round won't show up, so you have to be poking out somewhat like this. And if you hover just right, you should be able to collect the moonstone. So now I'm going to demonstrate the alternative ways of going through a tie well. And those would be hitting both switches and a pothead clip that passes through both barricades. Starting with the second switch here, I've already shown how to hit the first switch in the previous part. So you see it over there. It's very faint, but you can see a bit of purple. Like, the ideal way to do this would be to throw the javelin at a certain height so that you can roll into the passageway. Wow, I got that almost first try, I would say. I think it's like a 3 pixel window, I want to say. But anyway, that's the second switch. The intended way of getting it, you push this box all the way over to here, climb up here, and then push this box down here on top of the other box, and then to the right, but not all the way, push this down to the bottom. So that the top box up here will land on the bottom box and create the passage for you to roll into, but that's tedious, man. And as for the javelin issue, it may take a bunch of tries because it's awfully precise. And now moving on to the pothead clip that passes through both barricades. You gotta use three pots for this. You want to push them so that one of them is like halfway up to this little wall here where Gail's bonking her head, like right here. And then take another pot. Now the reason why we don't do this and just lift one barricade and clip past the other is because, well, the first the first switch is nice and easy to hit, so like... Um. So, like, why bother skipping it, right? So then you want to push this so that it's past the other pot, roll into here, and then, if done right, you should be able to clip like that. And that gets you past both barricades, because the nearest available space on the right is just past those barricades. So anyway, on to our regularly scheduled programming. Where we last left off, we got our Heart Ruby count up to 17, Moonstone count up to 28, 2 Asteroid Rocks, Gold Bar, Translucent Meat, Mekon Fragrance, 2 Stamina Boosting Items, Nebula Armlet, and Ancient Armor. And you should have at least 700 Rye by this point, 730 if you're on Meat Early route, or, or, or if you got Early Meat. But if you don't, if you're like 35 off, then you can enter this area and break this little chest here. It contains 35 normally, or you could dupe it for 70 if your budgeting is even worse. Or if you use Backup Rye for Revival. Regardless, it's a contingency in case the budgeting went wrong somewhere. As for the reason why I have 849, I can't really explain. Part of it, part of it is because of the gold bar price being so cheap. Because like, 
When I say that you should have at least this much rye by this point, I'm assuming that the gold bar price is equal to 150. And and when I bought it in the previous part, it was like 60 something, which is ridiculously cheap by comparison. So to start off, you want to enter this forge here. And then this guy is requesting, well, not so much requesting, but like, if you give him an asteroid rock, he'll say, oh, this is interesting. I'll give it to the blacksmith, see if he likes it. And if you enter an exit, give him another asteroid rock. And he says, found another one, come back in a bit. And if you exit and re-enter again, the morning star will be in stock. So you buy it for 200. And as I said before, it's an improved iron hammer. It does twice the damage of a wooden bat. So I would equip it immediately, personally, but I don't know if that's necessary. So here, if you didn't get early meat, then now would be the time to go into the shop, buy a sandwich, and then give translucent meat to this woman here. If you did get the early meat, you don't have to visit the shop, and instead the quickest way up to here, which is our next destination, would be to throw a javelin at maximum height, and then use the, and then abuse the explosion of the bomb to get back up, uh, to get up to the javelin. You can enter this area quickly. So here in this falling maze, you want to stick to the right, until you reach this little fork in the road, in which case you want the left drop, and that gives you a moonstone. Landing like cancel. And here we find a little box puzzle. Just simply, you gotta break this box with a bomb or a key spear. Key spear preferable. Push this far enough right so that you can push the other box on top of it. And you can roll into here for a heart ruby. Next destination is down to the sewer. Climb out of the bar up to here which I think is faster than taking the right exit, pretty sure. In the sewer, you go to the left. And right over here, throw a javelin and hover to it. Like, you absolutely need the javelin to backtrack through here. You don't actually need the rocket boots, but they're helpful. Now this little green pot here contains a moonstone. That's the only reason why you backtrack through the sewer. So that's all we need from Dea. So just exit the area. You can actually throw a javelin at a certain height so you can just escape more easily than having to go to the screen and find a ladder. It's a lot quicker that way. Next destination would be Prince Tower. wherein I'm going to be using another stamina boosting item just like the first time we came here and it's easier with the hover boots you don't act because you don't need the you don't need the stamina boost to jump past the chandelier so it's easier that way it's kind of spaghetti So you do want to kill these kobolds unlike last time because you are backtracking through here and they will stay apparent. Oh by the way, it's not advised to use the javelin here, you can use the rocket boots instead. Because like I said, using javelin on the ground kills forward momentum. Anyway, just a, another do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. So now you want to climb up here where you find a kobold and a flying bomb which you can just instantly destroy with the key spear and climb up here and grab the moonstone and if you throw the javelin here at a precise height then you can just hover to it and that's a quicker way than just going all the way around same deal as before use the key spear and just like navigate as you would in the in the first visit, really. If 
it's easier to quick kill the couple because one morning star and one javelin hit will kill. Okay, so here, here is where things get a little different. Like, if you have the hover boots, there's a much easier way to navigate this part of the tower, and I think it's faster. You climb up here, throw a javelin at maximum height, provoke the arrows, do a maximum height hover so the arrow will bump you onto the javelin, and then you can hover over to this ladder. Uh, grabbing it is tricky, though. So unless you use, unless you lose your stamina boost here, it's quicker to get this moonstone the intended way. But like, if you don't have a stamina boost, then then you can actually do a pothead clip that's slightly faster. Boom, like that. Plain and simple. That is the first instance where I dis or that this is the area where I discovered pothead clipping, basically. So now, remember the heart ruby that the Cobalt Mercenary General dropped? Well, we are going to grab that right now. But that's not all. But wait, there's more. Right where you rescued Leo, climb up top to here, and then... Hover to the right, and you should be able to find a second tower here. And this is one of the most annoying parts of the run if you're not used to it. But like... Well, you see the switch here. You would normally hit it with the javelin to make things faster. And if you climb just right, you should be able to get up here quickly. But let's assume that we don't here. Wait for this arrow. And then keep doing the... Stay on the right ladder. Hover to the right when the vertical arrow comes. And be careful of the horizontal arrows as well. Disabling the arrows is kind of optional, but preferred. I'm not sure. Like, I've never done it without. And thankfully you have the ancient armor, because with it the arrows only do one damage each. Anyway, so next up is this little box puzzle, which isn't nearly as bad. I recently discovered some new tech that saves 30 seconds over the intended way of doing things. You push this box all the way to where to this binary platform, throw the javelin at maximum height, push this one down, down here, and then throw the javelin at maximum height again, push this all the way to the left onto this little pressure plate here. And now the rest is going to be quick. Place a bomb on this binary platform, hit the switch, place a bomb up here as well, and step on here. That should lower the barricade. Now normally you'd have to do a lot more pushing, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick, or at least try, hopefully I can. Like the in originally intended way of doing things, push this to the right, push this to the left, hit the switch if I can, push this all the way down to the bottom, yeah something like that, climb up here. And then, with these two blocks, kind of screwed something up. Am I calling them blocks or boxes or whatever? Gotta separate them. Well, make sure they're separate, if possible. And push one as far to the right as you can, but still able to climb up. And then push the other over to the left side. And you want to hit the switch here, so you can push this all the way to the right. Climb up here, hit the switch, keep climbing, then push this to the right, hit the switch from over there, and then push this to the left, and then climb up to this pressure plate. That's how you would do it ordinarily, but do the method I did earlier, using the bombs. And here we're going to perform another loot dupe. Positionings are... Here. Can I get another one? Come on. Here and here. From this duping, you get 200 rye. 
which is the most from any form of duping. And you also get this heart ruby. You can also get this heart ruby here, and that's why you visit this tower in the first place. And here we get landing leg cancels for days. Just like get out of the tower. Oh no, one of the boxes is missing. Like we give a crud, right? Throw the javelin at that switch so the barricades will part. I don't get why they're not opened in the first place, but that's just how it is. Hover back to the left so you can return to the main tower. Now here I'm going to show off that you can use the bombs to prevent landing lag, basically. No need to worry about it here, but in the other rooms, it is preferable to pull out the bombs like this. Now in the next room, you want to pull out a bomb immediately. No, wait, not this one. The next, the one after that. This one. Pull out a bomb immediately so you can drop it on the switch. You may be thinking, why not activate the switch beforehand? Well, it'll be reset if you visit the second tower. For whatever reason, I don't... I haven't the foggiest. Anyway, just keep going like this. So that's why you want to kill the kobolds because they stay disappeared as you backtrack through the tower and it's much easier. It, it's easier to deal with, I would say, but I'm not entirely sure. So next up we're going to Great Walls. Now if you didn't give the sandwich here before, this is where you will. Gives you 40 rye in return. And climb up here and you talk to this guy. Who only appears if you clear the slime quest and then also... No, wait. Never mind, forget I said anything. That's not important. But, no, when you talk to Gil, that guy, then it's required for a moonstone and crossroads. And I haven't the foggiest why that is. It, it just It's just how it happens. Then you want to enter this room, and this guy wants me con fragrance, so give it to him, and you get a moonstone. And in addition, it's also one of the requirements to unlocking a new area. So, you can roll into the wall here, and then climb up here, push the box onto this pressure plate, do a charge attack so that the mailbox falls on here, and hey, take a free pookie jerky, because why the heck not. And now... You want to drop a bomb on here, and then, well, yeah, something like that. Um, oh yeah, you'd normally want to stand on one of the metal boxes and then charge attack the crate, but I kind of forgot that. Anyway, so that's the third to last heart ruby. We're getting close. In fact, this is actually the last time we'll be backtracking, really. So, along with the whole thing with the Moonstone for the Mekon Fragments delivery, well, that delivery and also the delivery to the sandwich guy, if you talk to this guy, he'll say he's heard about your deeds and says, hey, go on this delivery quest, gives you a knight's letter, and that also unlocks Farmer's Block on the world map. I had no idea about this my first playthrough. I didn't know until I looked at a walkthrough, in all honesty. So from there, just like, well, we're going to Farmer's Block. And enter this building, talk to this old man, he'll say, oh no, there's some croaking. And go into here. The frog is in the third crate, so just do a little charge sequence like this and easy. And then if you talk to him, he'll be at peace and give you a lucky belt. Which is another miscellaneous item. And then, at this point, if your Rye count is not 779, 
or if your ride count is less than 779, you can go over here and deliver the letter for 15 rye. In fact, you should. But that takes a lot of time, so you can just like exit to the world map otherwise. It doesn't take that much time, it's just like a little detour. So next up is Crossroads. Something was on my mind, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So in this treehouse, you see this woman. She will not appear unless you defeat the slime, or unless you talk to the last in the inn who talks about the slimes, and then exterminate the slimes and talk to the woman for the reward, and also free Fran, give uh, show her the five moonstones, and then talk to Gil in Great Walls. It's a really weird process. But if you have fulfilled those conditions, you get a moonstone. And next up is Dreadlands. We are back here. So just navigate it like normal. If only I could remember what I was going to say. But anyway. With the Morning Star and Nebula Armlet, things become, or the enemies become easier to deal with. So on this screen, things get different. Like, you want to go up to where you found the safe statue. Which I'll be doing in very shortly. Right over here, and hover to the right. And here's a little secret entrance here. Yeah. I still don't know how to really optimize this. So in that far right moonstone, you get a little... Or in that far right pot, you get a moonstone, sorry. Eh, I'm trying to commentate, but I'm getting psyched out by this gray golem. Yeah, I still don't know how to do that thing quickly. Might have to go back to rehearsal and do all these little strats here. Activate this switch, go in here. Now normally, you would do a complicated box puzzle with all the jank and try to well, you see this little switch here. Not that switch. Which one is it? This one? Yeah, yeah. It, that switch over there creates a rolling bomb. And, well, traditionally the point is to create a path for the rolling bomb to hit this switch here. But you can actually skip all that because... Because if you look here... The blast radius of the bomb is barely enough to hit that time switch down there. So with that in mind, you want to hit the switch here at the same time that the bomb hits that switch. So normally when you enter here, you'd want to pull out the bomb immediately like this. For some stupid reason, the barricades reset when you go through that door. And in this box here is the heart ruby. Which is the main reason why you backtrack here. The penultimate heart ruby, in fact. So you're gonna have to deactivate that barricade again for some stupid reason. And then just like backtrack your way out of this area, but then proceed this way. Because. If you remember that little, the time I mentioned when we were going through Dreadlands, that there was a moonstone right up there. The reason why we saved it for now is because it's easier to destroy the broken golem guarding it. Like this. See? Like, with the iron hammer and no nebula armlet, it would take one second of charge time and three melee attacks. But with the morning star and nebula armlet, you just... Take a half second of charge time and two melee attacks. But anyway, with this pot, 
You pothead clip through here and also grab the moonstone in the process. So that gets our moonstone and heart ruby counts up to 36 and 22 respectively. So go to Fran's lab and that's where I will end this part. Next up, we're going to end it all off. Go through Forgotten Forest and also beat the game. A la prochaine.